Age of Empires II is about empire building, combat and conquest. You start from humble beginnings, a small village in the Dark Ages. You explore to expand your borders, conduct trade to boost your economy, and research technologies to grow your civilization into a mighty empire. But there are difficulties too. Cunning enemies and rivals that oppose you, powerful castles to destroy, tyrants to bring down. And if you're skillful and a little lucky, you just might build a wonder of the world and create an empire that will stand the test of time. To learn how empires are built, help our first hero, William Wallace, in his fight against his oppressors. We are without a leader. The dead king of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south, where Edward Longshanks, the avaricious king of England, has returned from successful campaigns to conquer Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. Well, we must act soon. If we have any chance of resistance, we need to forge an army by any means necessary. The English are terrorizing all of Scotland! And it's time for us to fight back. But if we're to defeat them, every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good! Now, right-click near the blue flag. Good! Now, move to the next flag. Click the soldier, then right-click near the flag. Excellent! To move to the next flag, you must walk through the black area. Moving into the black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's all there is to it. Now go on to the next flag where you'll meet some allied soldiers. To move all your soldiers at once, click near the units and drag around them. Then right click to move. Try moving your soldiers to the next flag. Did all your units make it to the flag? The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click the red outpost. Right click the outpost to attack. their outpost. They're coming to attack your village. Don't panic. Just click your soldiers and right-click the red English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers and you will have won your first battle. Good job. 
Now you know how to fight back against the English army. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, we will need many more recruits. Much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be steeped in the blood of clansmen. An army marches on its stomach, or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meager forces that we've cobbled together will collapse again. To support the Scottish army, you'll need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. To gather food from the forage bush, pick a village. Then right-click the forage bush near the blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying 10 food. The villager will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. The more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. gather 50 wood and 50 gold. To gather wood, click a villager, then right-click a tree. Good! You found some gold!
Excellent! You now have enough gold. Longshanks, for all his disrepute, has shown military tactics in Wales, England, and France to be very effective. If not cruel and ruthless, he's indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. Would that I could call it a battle, but it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray we can be ready for Long Shanks coming. In villages throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. We lost the city of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up the spear, sword, or bow. We must remake these shepherds into soldiers. We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town center. Then click the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the screen. It takes time for a villager to appear. If your town center is selected, you can see the progress in the status area at the bottom of your screen. Good job! The villager has appeared next to your town center. Now, create another village. You need additional housing to support your population. To build a house, click a villager. Click the Buildings button, click the Build House button, then click where you want to build the house. If more than one villager builds a building, it will go up faster.
Good job. Try building another house. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current supportable population. Other buildings are made just like houses. Try building a barracks. The barracks is a military. Complete. Now you can create soldiers. Click the barracks, then click the Create Militia button. Selecting different buildings or units gives you different options in the lower left corner of the screen. That's one militia unit. Create three more, and you'll have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario. Click the barracks and quickly click the Create Militia button three more times to make three soldiers in a row. Now that you have a few soldiers, you'll be able to defend this area against English attacks. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But face it, Long Shank's army will be another matter. The wicked English king has yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias could only get us so far. We are going to need more advanced weapons. Rumors creep in from the south of a giant. Leads the forces of Scotland, his great sword driving through earth and man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can hold the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now, our smiths are forging swords, and Fletchers are making arrows and crossbow bolts. English use very advanced weapons and armor. To win, you will need to advance to the feudal age and repel the English raids. You're going to need to research some technologies of your own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villagers hard to kill. To research loom, click the town center then click the Research Loom button. Good. Researching technology costs resources, but improves your civilization. While you're researching, you can put your villagers to work and use your military units to explore.
see you again. New technologies and buildings become available when you advance to a new age. To advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, you need 500 food. Now you have enough food to advance to the Feudal Age. However, you also need two buildings from your current age. You already have a barracks. So now have your villagers build a mill. The mill is a drop-off point for food, so build it next to your food source. In addition to gathering food at forage bushes, villagers can herd sheep or hunt deer for food. you can advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age. Click your town center, then click the Advance to Feudal Age button. Good! You're on your way to the Feudal Age. Target it. Tall. 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 Bit fear. To arms! The English are making a sneak attack! Now that the battle is over, Create some extra militia units at the barracks to replenish your forces. Congratulations! Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve your civilization. Near the minimap at the lower right corner of the screen is the idle villager button. Click it and locate villagers who are not currently assigned to a task. Now that you're in the feudal age, you can upgrade your militia to men-at-arms. Click the barracks, then click Upgrade to Men-at-Arms. Upgrading to Men-at-Arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful Men-at-Arms. Bid fear. Tall. The English are attacking again. Targeted. Teach them a lesson with your new men at arms. are no match for your warriors. Longshanks has invaded, stormed and sacked the city of Perth. It's worse. 
He's captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, then the Scottish armies will be too demoralized to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, I wish he'd get his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle. Time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Longshanks is poised across the river forth and threaten the town of Stirling with a force of men-at-arms, heavy cavalry, and a multitude of archers. Our newly formed army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can ready their troops. The time has come to take the offensive. The English have a fort near the town of Stirling. If we can defeat the English here, they may think twice about their invasion of Scotland. To win, destroy the English tower to the west. Before we attack the English to the west, we need to build up our forces. Have your villagers start gathering food and keep making villagers at your town center until you have ten. The more villagers you have, the faster your resources will come in. You can specify a location for new units to gather by selecting a gather point. For villagers, click the town center and click the set gather point button. your villagers to build a mill near your forage bushes. Scout cavalry are poor fighters, but they can see a great distance. You can use your scout cavalry to explore the rest of the map and find the English. You can gain more food by building fishing ships. To create fishing ships, have your villagers build a dock in the water to the south.
here. You found some sheep. Sheep are a good source of food, so send them back to your town center and assign a villager to gather food from them. with the dead tree protects the only access to your town. It would be a good idea to build a watchtower on this hill once you advance to the feudal age. Bargara. the dock and build a fishing ship. a fishing ship and right click on a leaping fish. The fishing ship will collect fish and automatically return them to the dock. Fishing ships are also useful for exploring. Build a barracks and five militia to defend your villagers and explore them up. Villagers can also build farms. Build four farms near your mill when your forage bushes are depleted. Each farm needs only one villager working on it. Rob Wigger. Kia. 
idea. Rob Wigga. Kia. Don't forget, keep exploring the map. Once you've gathered 500 food, advance to the feudal oh, agent at town center. If you're low on food, build some additional farms. Kia. The English are coming to attack. To protect your villagers, you can use the town bell to garrison them in your town center. Click your town center, then click town bell. Good! You defeated the English assault. If you have villagers in your town center, ring the town bell again to send them back to work. Now that you've reached the feudal age, concentrate on making some soldiers to fight the enemy. You will need at least 12. Oh. Remember, you can upgrade your militia to men-at-arms at the barracks. You should always upgrade soldiers when you can afford it. Yeah. 
Here. Bit fear. Margaret, bid fear. Margaret. Rob Wigan. Bid fear. Now you have a large enough force to attack the English base. Charge! Keep your villagers working just in case you suffer casualties. I need to make more troops. Tall. Bit fear. Remember to upgrade your weapons and arms at the blacksmith. You do have a blacksmith, don't you? Kid. Rob Wigan. Rob Wigger. Kid? Kia? Bit fear. An English outpost. You know what to do. Knock it down. Close to an English base, you better not knock down this wall until you've got an army of about twelve soldiers. Bit, bit. 
Forget. Keep exploring the map. Kid. Rob Wigan. Rob Wigan. Here. Robogia. Robogia. Air 
про Боги. is sure to end in victory for the Scots. Good job! You've eliminated the English soldiers. Now, destroy that tower, and our victory will be complete. Now that you know how to build up, advance through the ages, and find and fight your enemies, you have all the basic skills you need to play a random map game. The most common type of game in Age of Empires. Sterling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word came in that the Sterling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the Hammer of the English. Edward Longshank's name's Wallace, a traitor and a criminal. But Sir William replies that he cannot be a traitor since he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. Our coffers were depleted at the Battle of Stirling. So we need to strengthen our economy once again before pushing south into lands held by the English. We need to construct the market and establish trade routes to the villages of friendly clans. Local legends speak of three sacred relics hidden south of Stirling. Acquiring these artifacts for Wallace's army will be a great boost to Scottish morale. The Scottish army has been rallied by recent victories against the English. The situation's starting to look up. Did you know that there are three different modes for the minimap in the lower right corner of the screen? Hmm? You can show only military units or only resources and trade units by clicking the buttons just below and to the right of the minimap. It will help the morale of our army to collect holy relics and place them in our monastery. One of the relics is close to your town. An ally has another relic, and the English have captured a third. You can retrieve a relic by clicking a monk and right-clicking the relic. Monks have other abilities as well. They can heal your injured soldiers or those of your allies. They can also attempt to convert enemy soldiers to join your arm. Here, bid fear. You have a relic. Protect the relic in the monastery by right-clicking the monastery. Farms are a good source of food once you've exhausted forage bushes and animals. 
farms are built like buildings and must be periodically rebuilt. To gather food from a farm, click a villager, then right-click a farm. Kid? Trebach. It's nice to have allies on the map. Your ally, the yellow player, can help you fight the enemy. You can also trade with your allies. Uh, to trade, you'll need to build a mark. Boy, yeah. The market can create trade cards to generate extra gold. You can also exchange one resource for another at the market for a small fee. Click the market, then click sell food for gold. Bonnet. You made a trade card. If you click the trade card on your allies' market, you can make extra gold. Your trade card will automatically make trips between your and your allies' market. Villagers and soldiers normally appear outside of the building that created them. You can have your units move to a spot once they're created by using gather points. To set a gather point for infantry, click your barracks, click set gather point, then click where on the map you want your infantry to gather. Rabuga. Rabuga. Yeah. 
You can use the technology tree to see what technologies and upgrades you can research. Click the technology tree button in the upper right corner of the screen to see the tree for your civilization. You've reached your ally's town. Go inside and see how his city's doing. Your ally's gate will open automatically for you. Bit fear, bit fear, bit fear. Kid, kid. We have enough soldiers now to think about attacking the English and recovering their relic. If you're getting ready to attack the English, I can help you out. Here, take this food and wood. Kid? Airlove. Bravo, yeah. Fear. 
Пробуги. То. Кид. Бидфир. Баргере. Кид. То. То. Бидфир. То. Кид. То. Кид. То. Эрла. Бидфир. Пробуге. Shh. 
Ireland. Shh. Again. Air love. Beat fear. Kid. Rob Wigger. Rob Wigger. Rob Wigger. Рабуге. Рабуге. Кид. Рабуге.
Herlov. Bid fear. Kid, Robogia, Robogia, Robogia. 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 Valgra. Kid. Robogia. Robogia.
have love. Fear. Thank <laughs> you. 
You now have two relics garrisoned. Bring back one more and you'll be victorious! Erlov. Robwigia. Forgera. Robwigia. Erlov. Robwigia. Welcome. If you've come for the relic, you can find it on the hill to the northeast of our town.
three relics now locked away safely in Scottish churches. Men murmur that we are blessed by the heavens. Our army now stands a chance as we prepare for the final clash with the English. Scotland now has archers and knights of our own with which to meet Longshanks. We march south to Falkirk, where we will rendezvous with the army of William Wallace and plan our combined attack upon the English castle. 